Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 32. Day 32. Day 32. 3032. 3 is to signify that we are in the third edition. Day number 32. And we are on page number 242. Make sure the book is in front of you and turn to page number 242. On page 242, you will see that we are dealing with quadratic equations. Here is the first problem, 2.4.1. And by the way, these problems that we are about to solve, every single one of these problems has already have, has already appeared in the first and the second edition of the book. If you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problem at a little bit of a slower pace, you will find all the original solutions from day number, from day 98 and 99. Just type in GRE Math, day 98, and it will pop right up. I'm not going to go into too much detail, as I said, we're going to just go through them very quickly. So it's a quadratic equation, uh, we have to solve this using, they're asking us to solve this thing using the quadratic formula, and quadratic formula, as we all know, goes something like this, x is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Let's, let's look at our a, b and c very quickly. Our A here is 2, that's our A. Our B is negative 1. B is negative 1. And our C is negative 6, that's our C. We're just going to plug in the values there and solve for it. That's all it is. Let's get going, shall we? So X equals to, X equals to minus B, minus B, and B itself is negative 1. So it's a minus of a minus 1, plus or minus, square root of, b squared, which is negative 1 squared, minus 4 times a times c. 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is negative 6. We have to keep track of all of that, and we have to keep track of the signs, otherwise things are not going to work out. Over 2 times a, 2 times 2. 2 times a, a is 2. Which in turn tells us that x must be equal to minus and minus becomes plus, so it's positive 1, plus or minus, square root of, and let's figure out the value of this discriminant. This quantity here, b squared minus 4ac, b squared minus 4ac is called the discriminant. Let's find out the value of the discriminant. b squared is negative 1 squared, which is just 1. Minus and minus is going to become plus, positive, negative and negative, negative times negative is uh, positive. 2 times 4 is 8, 8, 4, 8, 6 is 48, 48 plus 1, 49. Now, what do you know? It's the square root of 49 over 2 times 2 is 4. Let's continue here. So we have a plus 1, plus or minus, the square root of 49 is 7. Plus or minus 7 over 4. And from that point on we will break it up into, so x is either, x, x is either, plus 1 and plus 7, we take a positive root over 4, or x is equal to plus 1 and a minus 7. We take a negative root. Plus or minus 7 over 4. 1 plus 7 is 8. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So one, one value of x is 2. And here we're going to get plus positive 1, negative 7 is going to give us negative 6 over 4, negative 3 halves. That's our second value. And that's all there is. That's all there is. There is nothing to it. And if you like at this point, it does not hurt to invest a few seconds uh, to verify our answer, to make sure that we have the right solution. We could very very easily verify it. It doesn't take that long. Let's verify it up here. It only takes a few seconds. It only takes a few seconds. Let's first put, verify the value of 2, see if it works. So, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, that's 8, minus x, which is going to be 2, and minus 6. There you go, it, it equals to 0, it verifies. Very simple. Let's verify negative 3 halves. Let's verify negative 3 halves. Negative 3 halves is going to require some work. So we have 2 x squared, which is going to be negative 3 halves squared minus a negative 3 halves, because it's minus x minus 6, and this has to equal to 0, or better yet, this quantity better equal to 6. 
if this plus this is equal to 6, then we are, we are all set. Let's see what, let's, let's find out what that is very quickly. So this is going to give us 2 times negative squared, it will become positive, so it's 9 over 4. 9 fourths minus, or oh, becomes plus, plus 3 halves, and 2 is going to go away with this 2. So, 9 halves and 3 halves, 9 halves plus 3 halves is 12 halves. 9 halves plus 12, 3 halves are 12 halves, and 12 halves are of course 6. Everybody knows that 12 halves are 6. There we go. Then that's how we speak. 12, that's how, that's how one speaks, 12 halves are 6. Everybody knows that. 12 halves, 9 halves and 3 halves. Let's move on to 4.2.4.2. .2. Let's see what happens there. Something interesting might happen or something interesting might not happen. One never knows. One never knows until one gets there. The second one, second one says x squared plus 4x plus 4 is equal to 0. Now here, again, if you wanted to use the quadratic formula, you could do so. But you don't actually have to do your quadratic formula. It's very simple. Let's just take a look at it. It's just simply x squared plus 2 times x times 2 plus 2 squared. As you can clearly see, it is in the form of a squared plus 2ab, or b is 2, plus b squared. And a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, everybody knows, is equal to a plus b whole squared. So this entire quantity is simply our a is equal to our a here is x and our b is 2. So it's simply x plus 2 whole squared is equal to 2. If a square of some quantity is equal to 0, that implies that the quantity must itself be 0. This quantity must itself be equal to 0, which in turn implies that x must be negative 2. x is equal to negative 2. And that's the only solution it has. It has only one solution. It has only one solution. Now what does it mean in the context of the graph? Quadratic equation, as we all know, is simply a, a, a written manifestation of the parabola. If we were to draw a parabola and ask ourselves what's the equation of that particular parabola, the written uh, manifestation, written, uh, written form of a parabola is a quadratic equation. Or the, if you want to put it the other way around, quadratic equation in a graphical form is just a parabola. The question is, what does this parabola look like? It only has one solution. Well, let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at it. Well, we don't want to erase this thing. We're going to need that in a second. This is what's going to look like. I'm going to, if you were to draw this parabola, x intercept is negative 2 because we know that x plus 2 squared is equal to 0, which means x is equal to negative 2, and that's our x intercept. If we were to draw it, x, x equal to negative 2. 1, 2, right here. It touches the x axis only at one point, right here. It just touches only at one point. That's, what, that's why it only has one solution. It doesn't, typically we see a parabola cutting it in two positions, therefore we have two solutions, two x-intercepts. Here it touches only at one point. Here it touches only at one point. If we wanted to solve this thing using the quadratic formula, we could have done so, and had we done that, we would have seen that the discriminant would, would have been zero here, because we only have negative b over 2a. We don't have, it is a plus and minus that gives us the two solutions. It's when we take the root of this discriminant, when we take a root of it, the positive root or negative rate, that's what, that's what results in two solutions. If you were to do that, you will find the discriminant here would be zero. Let's find out, shall we? Let's, let's use quadratic formula. So here we have x um, minus b, which is minus 4, plus or minus b squared, which is 4 squared, minus 4a, 4a, a is 1, and c is 4. As you can see, 4 squared is 16, and 4 times 4 is 16. This discriminant here is equal to 0. So therefore the solution is simply negative 4 over 2a. 2a, a is 1. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, which is exactly what we found a second ago when we did the factorization. Do you understand? It only has one solution. It only has one solution. Why does it have one solution? Because the discriminant is 0. Let's move on to 4 point. 2.4.3 2.4.3 and see what happens there again something interesting might happen 
something interesting might happen as far as the discriminant is concerned. We'll find out in a second. x squared plus x plus 5 is equal to 0. First thing you have to notice is that if you try to factorize it, it cannot be factorized. We are looking for a product to be 5 and the sum to be 1. It is impossible find, to find two numbers whose product is 5 and whose sum is going to be 1. It's not going to, it's not going to happen. Do you understand? Because 5 being a prime number, the only, only way we can break it up is 1 and 5. If you break it up into 1 and 5, then the possible products are positive 5 or negative 5. And the sums are going to be either a positive 4. So you see, it's either positive 5 and negative 1 or the other way around. Negative 5 and positive 1. But as you can see, in, both, in either cases, the product is negative. Product is not going to be positive. The only way you can have product to be positive is when they are both positive. But if they are both positive, their sum cannot be 1. Their sum is going to be 6. It's not possible to factorize it. We'll, we'll find something more about it in a second when we use, use the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula is the, our only salvation. When we use the quadratic formula, we might learn something what's going on. Let's, let's see. x is equal to minus b, which in this case, our b, our b here is 1, our a is 1, and our c is 5. So, minus b, so that's minus 1, plus or minus b squared, which is going to be 1 squared, minus 4 times a times c over 2a. But we don't have to worry about the 2a part. As you can see here, this, going, this thing is going to be 1 minus a 20. 1 minus a 20 is negative 19. We cannot take a square root of negative 19. This is not a real number. Not a real number. A square root of a we cannot take a square root of a negative number. It has no real solution. This equation has no real solutions. It has no real solutions. Do you understand? Now what does it mean to have no real solutions? It simply means that it does not cut x-axis at all. It's sitting somewhere up there. Or here. Or maybe up here. Or maybe down here. It doesn't cut the x-axis at all. It, it, the nowhere it cuts the x-axis. Therefore, we cannot uh, find, ask ourselves, oh, when is y equal to 0? At what value of x does y equal 0? The value of this function is 0 at what, axis, what point? It doesn't exist because it doesn't cut the x-axis. If you were to plot it, we can figure out which one of these scenarios we're dealing with. We're not going to worry about it right now. Let's move on to 2.4 point. Four. because we want to keep making progress. In 2.4.4 we have the same exact equation that they gave us in 2.4.1 and they're simply asking us to solve this equation. If I want to double check. Yeah, that's right. 2x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0 and they're simply asking us to solve, resolve this problem rather, not solve it, we only solved it once using quadratic formula. They're asking us to resolve it by factorization. By the method of factorization. Let's do that, shall we? They want us to factorize it. So here, we're looking for a number, a magic number, whose product has to be 2 times negative 6. 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. So we're looking for two numbers such that their product is negative 12. Two numbers such that their product is negative 12. Their product has to be negative 12. And two numbers whose sum has to be negative 1. Two numbers whose sum has to be negative 1. We're looking for two numbers whose sum has to be negative 1. Can you think of two such numbers? Can you think of two such numbers whose product happens to be negative 12 and the sum has to be negative 1? Oh, it's very simple. It's 4 and 3. 4 and 3. Positive 4 and negative 3. Positive 4 and negative 3 has a product of 12, negative 12. But positive 4 and a negative 3 will not result in a sum of negative 1. We want a sum of negative 1, which means we want the other way around. We don't want positive 4 and negative 3. We want it the other way around. We want negative 4 and positive 3, and that would do the job. Negative 4 and positive 3, their product is negative 12, and when we add negative 4 and positive 3, the sum is negative 1. Let's do this, shall we? So negative 4 and positive 3, remember that. 
So we have 2x squared, and we're going to write our negative 1x in the, in the form of negative 4x and a positive 3x. You see? Negative 4x and positive 3x is going to give us negative x, and of course then minus 6 equals to 0. What do we find common? What do, you, what do we find common in these two in the first two terms? In the first two terms, we, we find a common factor of 2x. Let's take it out as a common factor. Once we take out 2x as a common factor here, here we're left with x, because x times 2x is going to give us 2x squared. Once we take out 2x as a common factor, from the 4, 4x we just have 2, because 2, negative 2 times 2x is going to give us negative 4. Let's look at these two. Let's look at these two terms. What do we have common here? We have a common factor of 3. Once we take out a common factor of 3, we are just left with x here, because 3 times x is going to give us our 3x. And once we take out 3 as a common factor from negative 6, we are left with negative 2, because 3 times negative 2 is going to give us our negative 6. And that has to equal to 0. Now we look at these two quantities separately. This, this first quantity right here, and this second quantity right here. What do we find common in here? What do we find? Is there anything common in these two quantities? The answer is yes. The common factor is this part x minus 2. That's the common factor. We're going to take that out as the common factor. x minus 2 comes out. And once we take out x minus 2, let me write down that 2 a little bit different, a little bit differently. x minus 2, once we take it out common, from this quantity we're left with 2x, from this quantity we're left with 3. I just told you that I was not going to do that and I ended up doing it again. I'm not going to, I'm going to stop explaining everything in such tedious detail. If you need this kind of explanation, if you need to go at a slow pace, slower pace, watch the original solutions, please. In the original solutions, we take our time and explain everything. So, if the product of two quantities is equal to zero, which implies that either, either x minus 2 is equal to zero, or 2x plus 3 is equal to zero. It's either this is equal to zero or that is equal. That's the only way the product of these two quantities is going to be equal to zero. If this is the case, this in turn implies that x must be equal to positive 2. And if that's the case, that implies that 2x must equal negative 3, which in turn implies that x must be negative 3 halves. As you recall, these are the exact same solutions that we found by using the quadratic formula. Of course, it's not going to change. Of course, it's not going to change. Do you understand? Nothing is going to change here. That was number 4. Let's move on to number 5. Let's move on to number 5. I'm debating whether or not we want to take a quick time, a quick second to plot it. Let's plot it very quickly, okay? Just, just very quickly plot it. Even though the book does not require it, it's not in the book, let's just plot it very quickly. It doesn't take that long. So, x is equal to either positive 2, positive 2 or negative 3 halves. Those are the, those are the x-intercepts. So here we go. 1, 2, 1, 2. Your scale has to be a little bit reasonable. Do you understand? Uh, as best as you can. I'm not sure if this is equidistance or not, but as best as you can. Do you understand? Here we go. So positive 2, which is right here, and negative 3 halves. This is negative 1. This is negative 2. So this right here in the middle is negative 3 halves. Those are the x-intercepts. What's going to be the line of symmetry? The line of symmetry is the midpoint between these two points, a 2 and 3 halves. Let's find out, shall we? Distance from here, from 0 to here is 2, and distance from 0 to here is 1 and a half, and we want a midpoint of that, so we divide by 2, right? So that's 3 and a half, 3 and a half divided by 2. Half of 2 is 1, and half of 1 is half, and half of half is a quarter. So it's 1 and 3 quarters. 1 and 3 quarter, a distance of 1 and 3 quarter from here, and distance of 1 and 3 quarter from here. Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out very quickly. We're looking for a distance of 1 and 3 quarters from either end. So from here to here is 1. This is, this is, this is a distance of 1. This is 1 and a half so far. And 1 and a quarter is going to be right here. Right there, voila. There we go. This is our line of symmetry. X equals to 1 quarter is our line of symmetry. And you can clearly see that it is exactly the same distance from here. See? From here to here is 1. This distance is a half. That's 1 and a half. And there's another quarter. That's your line of symmetry. Now that we have line of symmetry, we can find out the y coordinate of the vertex. Because we already have the x coordinate of the vertex. x coordinate of the vertex is 1 quarter. 
we put that in our equation, I erased it, we put that back in our equation and we can figure out the y coordinate of the vertex. And the equation was 2x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0, I believe. I know it's not in the book, it's not required. I was going to do the last problem and be done with it. I don't know how I got into it, but since we got into it, we have to finish it. So here's, I want to make sure that the equation I wrote it correctly. 2x squared minus 6, there you go. Let's substitute x equal to 1 quarter, 2 times 1 quarter squared minus a quarter minus 6 is equal to 0. That's going to give us 2, 2 times 2 over 16 minus 1 fourth minus 6 is equal to 0. Are you still with me so far? Okay, I hope I didn't make a mistake. Let's divide top and bottom by 2, so it becomes an eighth. This is 1 eighth and this is 1 quarter, so let's multiply this quantity by 2 over 2. You got to stay in the story, you got to stay within the story, okay? So now what happens is that, I need to erase this thing, I need this thing. Okay, stay with me in the story. So this was 1 eighth, so I, want, I converted this into 1 eighth so that we can, so this is 1 eighth minus, you see it's 2 times 1 over 2 times 4, it's not 24, it's, it becomes 2 eighth. This 1 quarter, this 1 quarter is being written as, we wrote this 1 quarter as 2 eighth, that's what we did. So it's 1 8 minus the 2 8. 1 8 minus the 2 8 is negative 1 8. Negative 1 8 and a negative 6. But that's negative, negative 6 and an 8. Negative 6 and 1 8. There we go. Right here somewhere. Right here somewhere. Let's call it. I shouldn't have drawn this. Just, just pick any point here and let's just call it right here. This, the vertex is positive 1 quarter and negative 6 and 1 8. Voila. And those are our x, inter x intercepts. There is a parabola. I'm doing it in a hurry so it, it does not come out very clean, but that's your parabola. We don't need this point. That, that's the x intercept. Or rather, x intercept is going to, that's the x, this is y intercept, which is going to be a little bit higher than, higher than the vertex. That's your vertex. The coordinates of vertex are one quarter and negative one, negative six and one eight. In the event, it is quite possible. Why not? It's, it's a quite legitimate question for somebody to give you this equation here. They might give you an equation like this and simply ask you, what is the line of symmetry for this given equation, for this given parabola? And if that's the question, what's the line of symmetry? We could have stopped earlier when we did the, we found the distance from here to here. First, we have to find the x-intercept which is same as finding the roots of the equation, we have to solve the equation. We found the roots to be positive 2 and a negative 3 halves. Once we have the roots, we take the average of the two distances. Not the two quantities, two distances. We have to take the absolute value of this quantity. We are measuring distance. We take the average of the two distances, and that's your line of symmetry. So they might ask us this, they might give us this equation and simply ask us what's the line of symmetry of this parabola, in which case the answer would have been the line of symmetry is x equals to 1 quarter. Or they could have gone a little bit further, uh, a little bit, a little bit farther rather, not further, a little bit farther, far, farther, uh, some more distance, uh, and ask us what is the vertex, what is the, what are the coordinates of the vertex, or what is the vertex? In which case the answer is the vertex is negative, uh, positive one quarter rather, and negative six and one eighth. There we go. Let's do the last one. Enough of the talk. We're not going to go into so the same thing in the last one, okay? So that gets to be too insane. The last problem, 2.4.5, is two point four point five. What the bloody hell is it? Just give me a second, I lost I lost track of the things here. Oh, well, there we go. 5x squared, 5x squared plus 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. Again, we can use quadratic formula or we can factorize, or we can try to factorize it. We shouldn't say or we can factorize it because factorization is not something that is always possible. So we could try to factorize it or we can use the quadratic formula. Let's try to factorize first, see if we can do it. So here we're looking for a number, we're looking for a number whose product is. 5 times negative 2. 
5 times negative 2. We're looking for a number, a magic number, whose product has to be equal to 5 times a negative 2, which is negative 10. So we're looking for a number whose product whose product is going to be negative 10. We're looking for two numbers whose product has to be equal to negative 10 and whose sum whose sum has to equal positive 3. Whose sum, two numbers, whose sum has to equal to positive 3. Can you think of two such numbers? Well, actually, it's very simple. It's right here, 5 and 2. 5 and 2, oh, it's very simple. We want product to be positive 3, so we want to put positive 5 here and a negative 3 here, a negative 2 here. Positive 5 and a negative 2 is positive 3. And, of course, positive 5 and negative 2 is going to be negative 10. This was too simple, actually. Just, let's, let's do it, shall we? Let, let's do it together. So, remember, it's positive 5 and a negative 2. Now, if you were to put down negative 2 and positive 5, it still, still worked, you understand? It's not going to do any harm. With, whether you put positive 5x first or negative 2x first, it doesn't really matter. So we have 5x squared minus 5x, rather positive 5x, and negative 2x, and a negative 2 equals 0. I'm not going to explain every single tedious step, we're just going to do it. The common factor is 5x, we're left with x plus 1, here the common factor is negative 2, here we're left with x, and here we're left with positive 1, because positive 1 and negative 2 is going to give us negative 2 equals 0, which implies that x plus 1 must... Uh, x plus 1 times 5x minus 2 equals 0 because we take x plus 1 common from these two quantities which in turn implies that x must be equal to either a negative 1 or x has to equal to 2 fifths. You solve this thing, that's it. Now, have we, have we, if we had done it the other way around, if we had written in a different order, nothing would have changed, nothing would have changed. It doesn't have to be written in this order, we could have written this 5x squared uh, what was it? Minus 2x plus 5x minus 2 is equal to 0 and it still would have worked out fine because negative 2x and a positive 5x is positive 3x and negative 2 times positive 5 is negative 10 obviously. Nothing has changed. It's just going to be a little bit different. It's going to appear in a different order. It's going to appear in a different order. What do we find common in these two quantities? The only thing common we find is x. After we take away x as a common factor, we are left with 5x here. And here we are left with negative 2. And what do we find common here? There is nothing common. So how do we write nothing common? Is there nothing common? Do we write 0? No, they have a common factor. They share a common factor of 1. These two quantities share a common factor of 1. And we simply write down 5x minus 2 equals 0. Because 1 times 5x is 5 and 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Again, you see 5x minus 2 is a common factor here. You see right here, these are the common factors in these two quantities. We take them out, 5x minus 2, we are left with x here and a positive 1 here, x plus positive 1. And we get the same answer as before, but in a different order. This appears later and that appears first. That's the same thing. Or we could have simply used quadratic formula. Well, they actually they actually using factorization method. Let's use quadratic formula and see how it works out. Let's use quadratic formula, shall we? We better get the same answer, obviously. Negative 1 and 2 halves, uh, two, 2 fifths rather. x is equal to, x is equal to negative b, our b is positive 3. So negative b means negative 3 plus or minus b squared, which is 3 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 5, times c, which is negative 2. You must keep track of your sign. It's a negative 2, not a 2. Over 2a, 2a, 2 times 5. So let's see what that gives us. So x is going to equal to negative 3, plus or minus, and let's see what this works out to be. Stay with me in the story. 5 times 2 is 10, 10 times 4 is 40, and this is and that's going to be positive 40, and that's the 3 squared, which is 9. You see, it's 49. It's 49 over 10, which in turn equals negative 3 plus or minus 7 over 10. Let's carry on. If it's positive, if we take a positive root, it's going to be negative 3 plus a 7 over 10, which is positive 4 over 10, which gives us 2 fifths, which is what we had before. 
If we take a negative root, we get negative 3 and a negative 7 over 10, which is negative 7, negative 10 over negative 10 over 10, which gives us negative 1, which is exactly what we had before. We had roots of we had we had roots of 2 fifth and a negative 1, which is exactly what we're getting here. Obviously, it's not going to change anything. Do you understand? It's not going to change anything. I think I'm going to stop here. We're going to stop right here. In the next video, listen very carefully. This is it. This is the last problem. 2.4.5 is the last one. As a matter of fact, let's make it interesting. Let's make it interesting before I close the video. I'm going to give you a homework. I'm going to give you a homework. 2.4.6 which is not in the book which is not in the book and here is how it goes we're going to do actually we're actually going to do three of them two three bonus problems they are not in the book the book only goes up to problem number five I'm going to give you six seven and eight and 2.4.6 Seven and eight, they all three of they are going to be all three of them are going to be quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative quantitative comparison questions. Comparison question. And if you want to practice, if you want to get some more practice on quantitative comparison questions, there are 70 videos you're going to find on my channel. Numbered the 401 to 470 to 470. Just type in GRE GRE math the 401. There are 70 videos. On the in the 70 videos, I believe I solved 210 quantitative comparison problem. If my memory serves me correctly. Uh, practice as many as you can. The more you practice, obviously, the better you're going to get uh, at those questions. Because quantitative comparison questions sometimes can be very tricky. Here's the first one for you as a homework. So, here's what is given to us. We are given an equation here. 2x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0. And in column A, we are told the product, product of the, of the roots versus column B, which is 0. Work on that. That's your question number 6. We are asked to compare the product of the roots versus versus 0. Do you understand? Here's the next one, 2.4.7. And the equation is 3x squared, the equation is x squared rather minus 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. And we're being asked to compare we are being asked to compare the sum of the roots versus the product of the roots. That's your next homework, 2.4.7. Again, it is not in the book. That's your next question. I'm going to give you one more because those three are the ones we're going to do in the next video. point four point eight. Again, not in the book as I keep reminding you. Don't try to look for them. These are bonus problems. These are bonus problems not in the book. Here's the problem. X squared minus X minus 380 we are told is equal to 0. And we are being asked to compare the sum of the roots the sum of the root versus 1. I lied to you, there are not four, three extra problems, there are four extra problems, 2.4.9. So that was eight. Well, I'm about to put nine. Here's the ninth one. Six x squared plus 19 x plus 15 is equal to zero. And here we are asked to compare the product of the roots, product of the roots, versus the sum of the roots. And yes, these kind of questions do appear on the exam. I'm just, I'm not making them up. These kind of questions appear on the exam on a regular basis in quantitative comparison questions. And when they appear in the quantitative comparison questions, 
deep, these type of questions typically appear as in the category of hard problems, not easy or medium. They appear as a hard problem towards the very end of the quantitative comparison questions. Here's the last one. Again, one more time. 6x squared plus 19x plus 15. We are asked to find the product of the roots and the sum of the roots. So obviously first we have to find the products, then find well, first we have to find the roots, find out what their product is and find out what their sum is. And then compare the two quantities. I might actually do them in two different videos. I, I don't think I'm going to try to do all four of them in one video. We might do uh, the 6 and 7 in the next video and, and 8 and 9 in the, next, in, in the following video. I think that might be better. Because if I try to do all four of them in one video, it might bore the pants off you. And one does not wish to do so. Do you understand? Because it is naughty. Bye now.